Hello guys, welcome back to another episode of Keeping Goals, episode three of series six. Excited to bring you today's episode, got plenty in there that I know you're gonna enjoy. More training, more goalkeeper work. So if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, helps us out loads. And if you haven't already, click subscribe, come and join the Keeping Goals Union. But let's jump straight into it and get started with the episode. First thing today, straight up and at him, in the gym, power session with Mackie. Let's go. So gym session with Maka done. A little bit more focus on explosive power and speed. Not as heavy weight, but shifting it as quickly as I can. But now that that's done, it's time to show you guys one of the coolest things about Petia in the winter, because I'm gonna head out onto the ice and we've got a special guest as well. Look at the bubbles. You can see the cracks and the bubbles in the ice. The ice is probably three, four, five meters thick. So, not much to worry about. <laughs> and I think it's time to meet our guest. This might be the coolest keeping goals intro of all time. Just sliding on in. Frank's is back. <laughs> Frankie's back. <laughs> How does it feel to be back in Petia? Um, lovely. Happy to be back. I'm very happy to be home. The lake that you've seen in previous Keeping Wells episodes that we walked around, we are actually nice. skating on top of it at the minute. Miracle. Surrounded by snow, as you can see, on the ice road. And this ice road is about, I don't know, I'd probably say two miles. And it's a big loop all the way across the lake. So you can come on with your ice skates, you can come on with these little sparks that we've got. Or you can walk. <laughs> Petia is a very, very cool town, but this is one of the best bits. I'm absolutely loving this. So we're back from the ice. We didn't manage to capture Frankie's dramatic fall on camera, but it happened. It was as dramatic as you're imagining, but it was a controlled fall. I rolled. Stop, drop and roll on the ice. I, I did think you might test it with the fall, whether you would plunge through. That would have been horrible, can you imagine? <laughs> but you did a massive crack. <laughs> We're gonna chill out, have some lunch, and then get ready for some goalkeeper training. Bring you guys along, show you what we're working on, making saves, diving around. So I'll speak to you when we're on the way to training. Pitch is looking good. 
They've got the heaters on, the snow's off, and we'll be training outside very, very soon, I've heard, which might be a little bit chilly, but I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, grab my kit, on the way to the dome, boots and gloves ready, time for some goalkeeping. Let's make some saves. So the first exercises of the session, very, very basic footwork and handling drills. So I've got markers laid out. All I have to do, different types of footwork through the markers, into line, first strike on the angle, drop off, second strike on the other angle. So here, my focus is just getting into the session, warming up, drilling my feet, drilling my hands. One of my thought patterns in these type of exercises is eyes, feet, hands. So in that order, making sure that my eyes are sharp, locking onto the target, locking onto the strike, making sure my feet are moving well, and then finally making sure that my hands are clean and I'm making good handling decisions whether to hold or whether to parry. So the next exercise is taking a high ball and then getting set for a strike. But the high ball's got a slight variation. So I move into my front post area. The ball is then thrown back behind me. I have to backtrack, take the high ball or deal with the high ball and then move in, set for the shot. So that backwards movement when taking a high ball is really difficult because if you're completely square on, it's very difficult to move back quickly. So I adopt a slightly angled position so that I can move back with a little bit more speed using the crossover step. I then either take the ball or punch the ball, testing out different punches as well using my weak hand, my left hand, and then get set for the strike. I'm practicing quite an aggressive start position with this strike. There's no bodies in front of me, no defenders, so I'm trying to be aggressive and see how that affects my handling and my dealing with the situation. That was something that I was testing in this drill. Now the second variation of this drill is that I'm attacking the high ball forwards, which is a bit easier rather than going backwards. I'm either coming to claim it as high as I possibly can or punch it. If I'm electing to punch, I'm trying to get as much height as I possibly can on the punch because height equals time. If the ball's in the air, no one can shoot. That would give me more time to get back in the goal. So that's something I'm working on with the punch. Again, as I'm dropping in for the shot, I'm adopting a little bit more of an aggressive starting position, a little bit higher off my line. I'd be a little bit deeper if there were defenders in front of me to allow for that deflection or to adapt based on the pitcher in front of me. But seeing as it's just one strike in front of goal and practicing that aggressive start position whilst, as always, trying to hold as much as possible. The next drill, back passing drill. Now I've run this drill in full because I think it should be quite interesting and hopefully bring you guys some value. Now I'm receiving the back pass from a central area. I'm being told to either deal with it with one touch or two touch. Now my focus in this drill is on striking through the ball using the punch or the stab technique. Now my first touch is key, that's what sets me up. If I'm already thinking about the pass before I make the first touch, I'm likely to make a mistake. And a good first touch is almost half the job done. I'm not hitting the ball too hard, I'm looking to connect with 70-80% power, that's all that I need. If I'm hitting it hard, I often find that that's when you get the slice or the curl that you don't want. If you're trying to hit a nice, clean, stabbed ball, you don't need full power. Just focus on that connection. That's especially true with the first time passes. I'm practicing with both feet, so my left foot, my right foot, working on that symmetrical distribution because in a game, I'm not sure which side will be my open side, which side I'll have to take the ball to. So I want to know that I can trust both feet equally. Now this one was an odd one, I got the touch slightly wrong, I had to readapt, and it actually threw off my pass which shows what we mean about the first touch being key. And again with this next one, went for more of a clip and got that fade which I didn't want. So for the final rep, making sure I reset myself, get my first touch good and focus on that clean stabbed long ball. Now the final exercise, taking a cross and then hitting the side volley or the half volley. With these crosses, my aim is to attack the ball at the highest point I possibly can. In training, this is where I can test my limits. I'm trying to catch at a point that I don't even think I might be able to catch at. Push those comfort zones a little bit higher so that in a game, I know where my limits are. I'm practicing single leg and double leg takeoffs 
focusing on taking the cross first before I worry about the distribution. Once I do take the cross, I'm looking to gain distance as quickly as possible, moving towards the edge of my box. Whilst gaining distance, I'm scanning the pitch, looking for my distribution options before eventually deciding on my target and then executing the technique. Picking between a half volley or a side volley and same with the passes off the floor, trying to keep it flat because that way I'll get the ball to its target as quick as I possibly can. But if I do need to go over larger distances, I'll use a little bit more arc, especially on the side volley, just to cover that extra distance. So there you have it. Those were my drills and that was my breakdown. So training done, hope you got a little bit of value from the breakdown. Any questions, as always, leave them in the comments. I'm currently packing my bag because we have a friendly tomorrow against our good friends, IFK Lulia, so that should be good fun. Looking forward to playing. That will be in the next episode of Keeping Goals, as well as something very, very cool, which I'm excited to show you guys. This week's Patreon of the Week is Rory Jackson. Rory, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching the videos. We really do appreciate it. We wouldn't be able to make them without patrons like yourself, so a massive thank you. Here's your Keeping Goals shout out. Thank you for watching the episode, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you in the next one, as always. But look after yourselves, keep chasing improvement, and I'll speak to you in a bit.